All right, I want to do a real quick video here. Uh, a little while ago, I had a brother um, that actually corrected me on something, and he said, because uh, I said, you know, about I reject modern Judaism and whatever else, and he said, well, brother, Christianity is a sect of Judaism. It's true Judaism. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's a thought. And so I've been wanting to put together a little video, and there's going to be more of this coming out in the future, uh, you know, more of uh, what did Jesus Christ do in terms of the law? Okay, he came to fulfill it, but what does that mean? What is the gospel that's going to be preached in the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh, very, very important study coming up. Um, I have to put it together right now. I don't have it done yet, but I do want to, I wanted to do, just do a real quick little video here on the main channel and just to explain the fact that Christianity is what we would call completed Judaism. And I didn't come up with that term. You say, who did? A converted Jewish rabbi named Ben David Liu, Dr. Ben David Liu, a Holocaust survivor on top of that. Not just a rabbi, a Holocaust survivor. Sorry to all the replacement theology Nazis out there. Yeah, he's actually a, a uh, Holocaust survivor. Um, so you can't do your little Catholic drivel here, but about that there was no Holocaust. But let's listen to a little clip here from Ben David Liu from his personal testimony. And I said, every Jewish person who comes here, for, that comes, not a converted Jew, I completed him. Amen. You see, 39 books is not enough. 60 books completed. Amen. I don't convert the Jews, I complete them. And I don't like to use myself because every synagogue and every Jewish person, the people who come to the wedding, Dr. Schindler, the first question asked me, are you associated, they call me over in New York, may the Jews for Jews? I said, no. Number one, they're charismatic, and they argue with the Jews, and every synagogue in our city is announcing, don't take any literature from the Jews for Jesus, because they argue with the rabbis, they go in the synagogues, argue with them, and I said, no, I don't have anything to do with Jews for Jesus. Our mission is the hope of Israel, and the hope of Israel is the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. And, uh, and Jesus is not only for Jews, it's for Gentiles also. And if you are here tonight, young or old, accept Jesus in your heart. So there you have it. Uh, he's a completed Jew. I like it that way. I like that saying. But let's just look at the actual thing. What does the New Testament teach concerning Judaism? Um, how are sects within Judaism started? Now I'm reading, I'm studying on the, the Jewish uh, different I can't really call it the Jewish religion or the Jewish faith because it's the same thing as saying the Christian faith. There's so much variety within the whole thing. And so, you know, I can't really narrow it down to just one, this is what they all believe. There's a lot of differences in there. But all of these differences go back mostly to different rabbis. So different rabbis would come up with a certain teaching. They'd interpret something from the Old Testament a certain way or they would take the Talmud or some other writing and they would say, you know, well, we believe it, it's interpreted this way and this other rabbi says, well, I disagree and blah, blah, blah. So a sect within Judaism always goes back to a rabbi, a teacher, a master in Judaism there. And I'm going to show you this. John chapter 1, the question comes up, was Jesus Christ a rabbi? Yes, he was. John chapter 1. Remembering what Ben David Liu said, I'll just tell you right up front, I believe that Jesus Christ was the last rabbi, the last real rabbi. He completed uh, what the Old Testament could not do. The Old Testament, let me just say this, the Old Testament cannot, the laws and the Mosaic laws and things and, and, and the Levitical laws and all that, it can never take away your sins. It can show you that you're a sinner. You can do sacrifices for your sins, whatever else, to try and get right with God. But the Old Testament law can never take your sins away. Can't happen. And you can never keep that law 100% perfectly. So, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. John chapter 1, verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay, Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God, the perfect Lamb, 
that was sacrificed to take away your sins. Verse 38, Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi. Now, what do you say? Well, what's Rabbi mean? It interprets it right here in the text, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted, the Christ. Okay, again, you have there which is being interpreted. You're having coming from the Hebrew into Greek there. Verse 42, And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. He's just a stone. He's not the rock that Jesus Christ built the church upon. The rock is Jesus Christ, contrary to what the Catholics believe. Verse 43, The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Beth Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now let me just stop right there for a minute, because this could be misinterpreted by an Orthodox Jew. They could say, wait a second there. Of, uh, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth there, the son of Joseph. And they could say, Moses and the prophets never mentioned Jesus of Nazareth by name. So that's false. Uh, no, that's not what's going on there. He's saying, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. We found him, comma, Jesus of Nazareth. All right? So they're saying... We found the Messiah, and this is his name. Not that the name was recorded in the Old Testament. That's very important for me to mention that. Okay, verse 46, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Interesting there that, you know, he's revealing that he's God. He can see somebody before he even comes and he knows what their name is and everything else. Um, look at Nathanael's response here, verse 49. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw us or I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Okay, very interesting little uh, side note there, a little prophecy thing, a little prophetic thing there. When we go to be with the Lord, we are as the angels of God in heaven. Uh, the Bible talks about that. I've done studies on it. Again, I can't cover it here in great detail, but you can study that thing out. But it's funny because it says here that they, you know, the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. We can't go up as Christians. We can't go up and we can't come back down without Jesus Christ. Right now, the body of Christ is waiting for Jesus Christ to call us up. A door opens in heaven. We hear our name. We're called. We go up. At the second coming, Jesus Christ gets on a horse, we get on horses behind him, and we come back down for the Battle of Armageddon and to wipe out the Antichrist and his army. Okay? Kind of an interesting thing there. But again, you see two references in that passage there that we read, both calling Jesus Christ Rabbi. Hmm. Now let's go to John chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. Here it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Okay, this is, one, this is not one of Jesus' disciples, hand-picked disciples there. This is a ruler of the Jews. Verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. That's important to remember. 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb, and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter, enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Question for you if you're an Orthodox Jew. Can you be born again in your system? Of prayers and alms and things like that? Can you be born again? Can you have your sins taken away? Or do you die and hope for the resurrection someday? Something to think about. But again, we see there a leader of the Jews back in that day. And this isn't, you know, Jesus wrote this stuff down and, and told people to disseminate it or something. These are eyewitness accounts of Jesus Christ. So this ruler of the Jews comes to Jesus by night and, and basically calls him rabbi. And he says, you're a teacher. You've done these miracles. You know, you have to come from God. You've done these great miracles. You know? Hmm. But you say, but, you know, somebody out there is saying, but didn't Jesus condemn rabbis? Didn't he have some condemnation for rabbis? Let's go to back to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew 23. Verses 1 through 12 it says here, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, their what, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Interesting there, a little dispensational problem for you if you're non-dispensational. Jesus Christ is saying, Yeah, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Whatever they bid you to do, that do. Is that the system we're under today? No. No. Why? What's going on? Well, this is doctrinally in the Old Testament. Up until the time of the crucifixion, you can read Hebrews chapter 9 to prove that. The New Testament starts there. In Hebrews 9, it talks about this. The New Testament starts with the death of the testator. Jesus dies on the cross. Then the New Testament begins. But before the crucifixion, it's all Old Testament doctrinally. But let's continue. Verse 4, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, which a lot of the Jewish rabbis do that, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, but be not ye called rabbi, look at this, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that, humble, that, he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Okay, um, very interesting there. And you say, well, I don't agree with that. You know, Jesus wasn't the, you know, the Messiah that the Jewish people accept and everything. Okay, I, I understand that a lot of the Jews reject Jesus Christ right now as being their Messiah. But let me just ask you a question. If he was God manifest in the flesh, if he truly was who he said he was, um, would he have the right to say, I'm now the only one rabbi, I'm the only father, I'm the only master? Would he have the right to say that? Oh, yeah, he would. But you see there, again, this thing of Jesus Christ basically saying that he now is the rabbi. I mean, why do you need a whole system of rabbis that, that contradict each other when you have one rabbi, one high priest? I'm going to show you about this. What does the Bible teach? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Should be a pretty familiar scripture to you if you know the Bible. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one medi mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And of course, you can read in the book of Hebrews, it talks a lot about that too. He's our high priest. Now, as a Christian, 
my intercessor, my rabbi is Jesus Christ. But again, you say, well, that's just Christianity. But what is Christianity? It's a sect of Judaism. It's not apart from Judaism. It is completed Judaism. That's what it is. And Jesus Christ is the final rabbi, the final master, the finer t final teacher. Okay? John 4.22, you say, but, you know, I, I still don't, don't see this thing that uh, Christianity is a sect of Judaism. Well, let's talk about the thing of sect, S-E-C-T. Uh, John 4.22, and I talked about this in one of my Replacement Theology Lies debunked videos. It says, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay, Jesus Christ plainly says salvation is of the Jews. Salvation comes from a Jewish Savior. This is a Jewish book. All right, That's why it's so strange to hear people who claim to be Christians attacking the Jews. It's rather weird. But um, we're not going to go to all these verses because, for sake of time, but Acts chapter 5, verse 17 talks about the sect of the Sadducees. Um, Acts chapter 11, verse 26, if you know the scripture there, the Jewish disciples are called Christians first in Antioch. So they're Jews and they're called Christians. So it's a sect of Judaism. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 5, talks about the sect of the Pharisees. So within Judaism, there are different sects. And of course, that's there today too. I mean, you have Orthodox, you have ultra-Orthodox, you have Reformed, you have a lot of liberal type Jews, you know, and things. It's there. Okay? Christianity is just another one of those sects. But it just happens to be the right one. The one that is completed Judaism. The one, the Jews that are looking for this promise of being able to have their sins taken away. It's taken away. It's done away in Christ. You know, all the, the laws and everything that are contrary, that you have to do this and you have to do that to try and stay in God's good favor. You don't need to do that stuff anymore. The law is there to convict you, to show you that you are a sinner. That's there. But then, what do you do about those sins? See? Jesus Christ paid that price so that you don't have to. Acts chapter 24, verse 5. Turn there in your Bible. Acts chapter 24, verse 5. And look at this. This is interesting. It says, For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout, all, or throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So they were calling Christianity a sect back then. Rather interesting. Turn next to Acts chapter 26, verse 5. It says here, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that afterward, or after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Paul's talking about when he was a Pharisee, and he calls it a sect. Okay? A lot of people try to, you know, kind of think of sect being like a cult or something like that. No, it doesn't have to be that. It's just a sect of Judaism would be the Pharisees. Another sect is the Sadducees. Another sect is Christianity. Christianity is Judaism. All right. Now, I'm not saying that all Jews are saved, that they're all Christians automatically because Christianity is part of Judaism. No, no, no. Christianity is a unique sect of Judaism. But um, Acts chapter 28, verse 22. Acts chapter 28, verse 22 says here, But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Okay, and it's talking about the Jews that were there in uh, uh, Rome. You know, he's there and these Jews are going, we don't really haven't heard, you know, a whole lot about this. We want to hear about it. You know, we'd like to hear more about this sect here. So Jesus Christ as a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, brings in completed Judaism. He comes in and he makes a brand new branch of Judaism. Christianity is not apart from Judaism. Christianity is completed Judaism. 
we have something that the Jews themselves do not have. Other sects within Judaism, I should say it that way. Other sects within Judaism do not have what Christians have. But I cannot say that my salvation is apart from the nation of Israel. If it wasn't for the nation of Israel, for the Jewish people, if it wasn't for the city of Jerusalem, I would not have salvation. So, um, I'm going to be doing a study, like I said, in the future on the thing of what did Jesus bring in, what's the relationship of the Old Testament to what Jesus brought in. And uh, But if you really want to know about the relationship between New Testament Christianity and the Old Testament, and what, did Je what Jesus really truly accomplished, read the book of Hebrews. I mean, it's if you're Jewish, it's written to you, to the Hebrew people. So that will be it for this video. Thank you for watching.